I am a longtime friend and colleague of Ron's, now serving as a legal advisor of the U.S. State Department. And I bring you greetings, Ron, from my clients, President Obama and Secretary of State Clinton. <laughs> if there were a fan club for your new president, my wife, Christy, and I would happily sign on as charter members, for we've had the joy of knowing Ron for two decades. I met him as a superstar graduate of Yale Law School where I teach, and before that as a leading student or the leading student at the University of Toronto Law faculty. And I mentioned Toronto for this reason. If you were looking for a president who has spent his life rooting for Blue Jays, Ron is that man. <laughs> As fellow law deans, Ron and I shared a passion for bringing international law, human rights, and development to legal education. And while he was at provost at Penn, I watched his talents help drive a world-class university to greater heights. These two decades have taught me that to know Ron Daniels is to love him. I admire everything about Ron, his brilliant wife, Joanne, their gifted family. But above all, I am jealous of his uncanny ability, like Benjamin Button, to look younger and younger <laughs> with each passing year. But my friends, don't let that baby face fool you. At this defining moment in your history, you have chosen as your president one of the great academic leaders of our time. In Ron Daniels, you have found a leader of proven dynamism and decency, a man of guts, generosity, and excellence and a scholar of global range and vision. And what a time it is, because Ron takes the helm of this great university at a uniquely global moment. For the world his students will explore is defined not by the dividing image of a Berlin Wall, but the network connections of a worldwide web. This is a world filled with global opportunity, but racked with global insecurity, high-tech wars, loose nukes, financial crises, swine flu, piracy, trafficking in drugs and humans, a rapidly warming climate, and yes, terrorism. And your university already has premier institutions to address these global challenges. One of the world's preeminent medical schools, a storied school of international studies, a world-class program in arts and sciences, to name just a few. But I assure you, through ideas and resources, your new president will make those institutions stronger. Through his career, Ron has been a pragmatic problem solver, and he has poured his talent and passion into service of those in need. This, my friends, is the driving idea of Ron Daniels' career. Like the president and secretary I serve, your new president's idea is development global and local, institutional and individual. He believes that persuading people to give of themselves globally and locally, to participate in democracy and civil society, to respect the rule of law and the rights of others will give them a greater stake in their own future, put food on their table, and give them better health care, education, and future. This is how he has lived his life as a legal scholar focused on global development, he searched for ideas to help lift the world's bottom billion. And as you saw from his President's Day of Service, inspired by a longtime human rights attorney who happens to be his wife, he has always called on the institutions he is a part of to serve all the communities of which they've been citizens. Soon after Ron became president here, I asked him, do you have any time to relax? He told me he was spending his spare time using his Blackberry while watching old DVDs of Diner and The Wire. <laughs> so even in his spare time, your new president was spending every waking moment thinking about how this university, dedicated to service, could help this historic city to tackle its challenges. In short, the mission of Johns Hopkins and Ron Daniels has always been the same, knowledge for the world. Now, don't get me wrong, Ron Daniels is not perfect. <laughs> he has at least two flaws that I know of. The first is that no one can read his handwriting. 
<laughs> that is why he always uses BlackBerry. And if you look at his hands, you will see that his incessant BlackBerry use has given him two of the most highly developed opposable thumbs in the Western world. <laughs> and he has a second flaw, which you've heard of from Michael Trebilko. Sometimes he has so many ideas, we ordinary people just can't keep up. Which reminds me of a favorite story with which I will close. When I was a teenager, my friend's father suddenly cashed in the family's life savings to clear land in Vermont to build a new home, shaped like a gigantic geodesic dome. This is a true story. The father was an engineer skilled in geometry. He spent countless hours in his garage designing the geodesic dome. He spent nearly all the family's money clearing the site, buying the building materials. And the pivotal moment came when he rented a gigantic 40-foot crane to lower the keystone piece of the frame into place, completing the dome skeleton. And with the whole town watching, the crane started to lower the keystone down. And then suddenly everyone screamed, stop, stop, the piece is too big, it won't fit, we have to call it off. But with the keystone literally dangling in midair, my friend's father called a halt where he double and triple and quadruple checked his math. And after 15 frantic moments, the father shouted, I've thought it through, it must be right, let's do this, we started this, let's finish it, lower it down. At first they hesitated, but they trusted him, they lowered it down, and of course it fit, and the job was done. For you see the observer's perception that the pieces wouldn't all fit had all been an optical illusion. And on that day, through one man's vision and determination, a thrilling new structure appeared on that field in Vermont. So why do I tell you that story? Because mark my words, today, in a few moments, President Daniels will call you and this university to a great new adventure. That adventure will be rooted in his humane vision of citizenship and service, idealism and pragmatism, development, global and local. His vision will sound great, but ambitious. The challenges will seem daunting. And when he calls, some of you may think, but the pieces can't fit, it can't be done. But before you say no, remember my story, because believe me, like my friend's father, my friend, Ron Daniels, he will have thought it through. Believe me, he will have checked the numbers. Believe me, when he says, let's do it, it must be right, let's finish this, please trust him. Ladies and gentlemen of Johns Hopkins, congratulations. As we say in Korea, mazel tov. <laughs>